All right, everybody, welcome to the Deal Scout. We got seven minutes on the clock. What is your name? And tell us about the kind of deals you're looking for. Yeah, my name is Malcolm Peace. I'm based in Austin, Texas, and we buy exclusive businesses in Texas doing three to $12 million in revenue that have been around longer than 10 years. We love the industries of blue collar. We love those businesses where you got to roll up your sleeve, get a little messy. I love it at the end of the day when my guys can't shake my hand. They got to give me the fist bump because their hands are disgusting. Those kind of businesses are the ones that people want to stay away from, but I think the money's there. So we, we go hard, far into it um, as far as we can um, by taking technology and applying to them. So our game plan is to take low code, no code software into these businesses that have obviously or historically been um, neglected in that way. And we exclusively work with those um, to help them scale. Nice. So give us an example of the, the blue collar kind of businesses. Are we talking plumbing businesses, HVAC? Yeah, so we focus a little less on home services because that's a very interesting niche. We could kind of get into a longer aspect of it, but um, there, there was a big roll up for a period of time and HVAC, everybody knows, but that was happening in other industries too. So we love commercial um, services like that. So we'll definitely check those out. We also think there's an opportunity in government contracting um, businesses around that same one. So we've looked at folks that do, um, you know, fixing of manholes, um, commercial electrician, underground wire for utilities of uh, municipalities, um, all sorts of things like that. Uh, we have bought into the manufacturing space. That is definitely a focus of ours as well. Uh, but we are exploring that and we're hopefully getting close on a logistics company here soon. So, um, we, you know, we're, we're trying to build out the platforms and looking at things that we can play our playbook and being able to get to a no that our playbook just doesn't fit is incredibly important. And that's always an awkward conversation with an owner, right? They, they need to sell for whatever reason, or they want to transition their business. Um, and we've got to ultimately decide, can our playbook really work? Because um, candidly, we're not you know, we're not trying to just raise funds all the time and all that kind of stuff. We're trying to build a reputation over time about being able to execute on the things and the knowledge that we have. Yeah. So the value proposition for the business owner, right? They're they're in Texas. They're in the hot heat or in the cold winters. They're <laughs> they're out there grinding, doing the blue collar work. And here comes a guy, and you're like, hey, maybe you're interested in selling. Why would yep. they want to take a call with you? Yeah, great question. So we fill the niche of what I like to call the. Um, the quasi son, niece, nephew, or daughter that they've always wanted to have. Because a lot of these businesses, when, it, when you take a business from zero to seven figures or low seven figures for that matter, um, it's a grind on the family. And there's often a lot of negative connotation that happens around the business with these family members. And so we try to fill that hole that really that owner really wishes they could have had internally within the family. Someone wanted to take over, someone wanted their brick manufacturing company, their roll-off dumpster company, um, and to continue it on to their new legacy. Um, you know, historically, that businesses don't transition very well um, in family. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Some of it is, um, you know, just transition of kind of the structure of the deal, transition of control, all sorts of aspects. And so um, we come in and we say, hey, look, business owner, we love um, your manufacturing, your service company, whatever it may be. Um, we would love to be able to implement the following game plan. And I can assure you in five years time, you'll be welcomed with a warm hug because I know what it took for you to get to where you got to. And so um, that's that's the real truth. And, and my belief, um, and I'm sure that that's the sentiment for most people, there's a different skill set based on the season of the business. And so when we look at these businesses that are kind of low seven figures, taking them up to $12 million in revenue and trying to double revenue in two years, which is always our goalpost that we shoot for. If we're going to do that, there's a different skill set that has to happen. The business can no longer be dependent. There has to be standard operating procedures that happens. There's got to be automation. There's got to be engagement for um, kind of low task employment. Um, so there's a lot of aspects that we play into that. But our hope is that um, the owner sees the greater vision and that we can play that skill set to take them there. Yeah, you talk about the goalposts. Uh, repeat those for me, because I think that those are important for, for people listening in is you have sure. a very specific niche and uh, like kind of like guideposts for you on, on making decisions? What do those look yeah, like? Yeah, so um, and there's a multiple reasons for that, but to keep it really short, my framework of belief is that if you set a goalpost um, and you make different decisions to get there, so take the football analogy one step further, if yeah. you ultimately um, set the goalpost short or different than uh, potentially a big goal or something that you really think is possible to achieve with this business, you're going to make different decisions. Um, depending on what yard line and you're on, you're going to make different decisions. And depending on how much time's on the clock, you're going to make different decisions. So if I put a time clock of two years, I'm going to make specific decisions around that. What does that expansion look like? New market expansion. What does it look like to increase 
um, capacity in a real easy, tangible way. So that was what we did recently. So manufacturing, tangible reason, manufacturing company, big bottleneck that we have, got a vendor that's able to do it. We can scale up really fast by employing that vendor to be able to do the exact same thing we do in-house. And so that allows us to scale up quickly, right? And so then we just, then we have to do the subsequent, you know, process to be able to manage all of that quality control. But at the end of the day, the goal is to be able to scale quickly. If that's the case, we got to make certain decisions. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and if you have a 50-year plan, right? It, you're going to make different decisions based on time frame. Time constraints yeah. help us make different decisions. If you need That's to right. make payroll tomorrow, you're going to make different decisions than you're trying to pass this off to your grandkids. Ah, very Absolutely. interesting. What is the, when, when working with a family business, um, are you looking to have the, 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 the founder exit or stay along? What, what are the best things that you found working? Yeah. So um, nine times out of 10, we're dealing with owners that are dealing with the three Ds, divorce, death, or disinterest. And typically I said in death, because that one tends to be the, the one that comes up more often than not. People reach a certain age or reach a certain lifestyle or life moment where they need to be able to transition out. And so as a result, um, we come in and fill that. But to answer your question more directly, um, we work with the business owner to find a solution that works well for them. But we do believe part of our thesis is that businesses that get to low seven figures often are very dependent on the owner. They were the technician, they were yeah. the expertise in that way, or they were the one that got the vendor up and running. And so as a result, um, you know, our belief is that we got to build a business where that owner is not in the middle, call it a decentralized business. Yeah, that's so good. And the, so there's an identity thing that we could talk about at a later thing when someone exits their business, but we're running out of time for people who are looking at maybe doing a deal with you or uh, finding a way to work with you guys. What's a good place for people to do that? Yeah, I'm all over LinkedIn and Twitter under Malcolm Peace, but more directly, you can find us at Sitsera Growth Partners, T-S-E-T-S-E-R-R-A.com. Cool. All of that information will be in the show notes, guys. Welcome to the new series of seven minute deal making. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have a deal you'd like to talk about thedealscout.com. We'll see y'all on the next episode. Bye everyone.